The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back to the Roar and Peacock Youth Podcast. This is another one of our special interview pods. We are joined today by a very special guest. But first, I'm your host, Ross. With me, as ever, is Rob. Hello. And Matty. Hello. And we are joined by former Leeds United Youth Academy player, Romario Vieira. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. How are you guys doing? Oh, you're most welcome. Really good. All good, thanks, mate. First of all, Romario, thank you so much for giving us your time. I guess we'll, we'll kind of start with a, maybe a, an open question or as such is, what would you say is your um, favourite memory uh, of being uh, at the Leeds United Academy when you were with us? Favourite memory? Probably my first goal. Yeah. My first goal. We played um, against Hull, Hull City at home at Four Park. And uh, Carlos, Carlos Cobran was the manager at the moment, him and Danny Schofield. Okay. And I think we we won four three at that game, but I think I scored I scored the third goal, the third or the fourth. I'm not sure. I can't remember right now, but I think it was the third. Yeah. And then it was just just it's a good goal as well. To be fair, and <laughs> even the lads in the in the in the in the change room they were saying it was a, a it was a scrappy goal, but nah, <laughs> I ain't taking that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what guys were in the uh, with the academy with you then that time? Any of the names that are kind of dotted around the first teams and anywhere else now, or of, uh, what, uh, what are they up to? Malik Malik Wilkes were there. Yeah. Uh, Shackleton was there. Uh, Alfie 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 was there, but oh, really? I think he's on. I think he's on loan now. And uh, what's his name? He's on loan at Brist. He was on loan at Bristol. Still got sure. to, got to, got oh, Robbie Goss. Oh, oh Robbie, yeah. 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 That's just gone yeah, to yeah, Salford yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just joined, yeah. joined the Reds, unfortunately. Yeah, for him. <laughs> and a few a few Spanish players as well. Okay, was that was that that was so that was the season under Thomas Christensen, wasn't it? When everyone kind of was just youth players being brought in all over the place. Was it yeah. kind of did it was it tough to get that going, basically, to get like everyone playing as a team because there were so many nationalities and so many different kind of avenues coming into the into the team? You know what? Because um, at the start, at the start, it kind of was because the manager was Spanish and obviously he could speak English, which is Carlos. Yeah. But, and and there were a few Spanish players and stuff, but there was a point at the start where in the change room there was like uh, little groups and stuff, like obviously the British lads and and then Spanish lads and stuff, but then. As the season went on, and and with the type of manager uh, Carlos is and and uh, Danny Scorfield as well, yeah, we got we got to get the group all together and stuff, and and then as the season went on, we all just stuck together and and, and just fought through it together. No, oh, nice. How was Carlos as a manager? You pr- must be good to see him doing so well with um, Huddersfield. Was he always kind of destined for? Yeah, he's he's a, he's a brilliant manager. Yeah. I, it's just just Carl, uh, Carlos was a brilliant manager and also Danny Scorfield. Who was a an, his assistant with the twenty threes, right? At, and I think he's working with him as well at Huddersfield. So they were both really great. Carlos knew he knows the game inside out and really changed a lot of players in the on the twenty threes and improved them a lot. To be fair, yeah. And he just taught us a lot about football, which I think like not most most managers don't do, which they just come to get result, but not really like make you progress as a player. But Carlos yeah. does. Like does the both things at the same time, which is very good to be fair. It's interesting. So there was like a philosophical, yeah, philosophical element as well as the actual football element in in terms yeah. of the way he approached his coaching. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like he just he'd want you to do well is as an individual, and he'd want you to do to take that that wellness you're doing as an individual into doing it as a team. So I think that kind of worked very well and. And also Danny Schofield helping on the side as well. And uh, like, to be fair, Danny Schofield helped me a lot mentally. Yeah, I was struggling with a few things mentally. To be fair, and then um, he would just he would just speak to me, take me to the side, and give me good advices because he was an expert as well, and he's been in the game and he knows what it's about and stuff. So 
it's very good to get advices from people that experience the things that you're living at the moment. So yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at Danny Schofield's Wikipedia page now. He's been around a lot yeah, longer than Huddersfield, Yeovil, Millwall, Rotherham, Accrington, Stockport. <laughs> He's been yeah, all over the place. Yeah. Been through it all in it. So yeah. yeah. Every level as well. Exactly. <coughs> uh, mate? And how are you um how are you finding life at the minute? How's your football going now? How is everything with you at the moment? Are you well? Are you you know, you enjoying you know what, what's what's the kind of situation with Romario as we as we stand at the moment? As we stand at the moment, because um, I, I joined, I rejoined uh, Tad Custer just to get me going again after the, the injury that I had and the surgeries yeah. and stuff after the long stop. So I rejoined the uh, Tad Custer to get going. And then as I was finding my feet and get going again, this corona thing stopped. Mm-hmm. Like, and, you know, we had to stop the league and, and trainings and stuff like that. So at the moment, I'm just doing one to one training with the, the um, um, fitness coach and stuff. Right. So every day on a month. So, for example, on a Monday, we'll do some fitness work in the morning and then in the afternoon, do some uh, gym work. And then Tuesday, same thing. Wednesday off, Thursday, uh, gym uh, fitness in the morning and then strength work on my knee, working on my knee just to strengthen it and stuff in the afternoon. And then Friday, just pure fitness in the morning and then weekends off. But I'm trying to, like, I'm just trying to keep that same, same, um, I'd say same routine as I had as a as a, as a pro at Leeds. So just just to get me prepared in, into as in like whenever I get back in, into the league, into the game and stuff. So I'm prepared and my body's prepared as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an, an area that's not spoken about often enough at the moment. The fact that we've got uh, across the whole country, from you know the, the deep south right up to the, the borders of Scotland, in the English game, there's leagues that can't continue at the moment, and, and this situation has brought about many players who are now having to find new focus and new um, a new a new kind of like you say routine regimes. How do you keep your training up and your intensity and keep the yeah. focus on when you can return? You know, to to give that that all. What would you yeah. say has been the Apart from pure desire and passion and professionalism, what would you say if there, if any has, has been an influence on you keeping up with that strict routine? Because it could have been easy for you to say, do you know what? We've got some months off and this and that. So, what would you think has driven you? I think I think because because my, my 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 brother uh, Ronaldo, he's doing well. He's doing very well and stuff. And and uh, and obviously he's he's living our dream, which for me him him living it is like me living it. So. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I want to do it as well. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah. so that keeps me going. And and it, it, it remi- every day, I just gotta remind myself, like, listen, you're not where you want to be right now. You yeah. will get, but you only get there if you put in the work. So like, just gotta put in the work every day and stuff, and and you know, leave the rest to happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you say, you re- you're rebuilding it. Like I saw yeah. um, Ronaldo putting a massive crunching tackle on Ronaldo. Um, a couple yeah. of weeks back, the Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. on, the, on on on, the, yeah. on Twitter, and that was nice to see because the, the old nice. allegiances. But <laughs> and do you have? Obviously, we've got a, a, quite a loyal listener fan base. Um, we we recognise that a lot, and we speak about that in our kind of reviews and podcasts that we look at the academy. Do you find, um, even though you've moved on, we've spoke to other people who've, who've left Leeds, and they still talk quite positively about Leeds fans in general, and that they still have a loyalty to that player. Yeah. Um, and do you find that you still have Leeds fans? You know, like I know we all on this podcast are, are huge fans of anyone that's ever worn a Leeds shirt at any level. So we'll continue to support that person with dreams and aspirations. Do you still get that? Do you still get that buzz off Leeds fans giving you that kind of? Honestly, know? honestly, like it's it's, it's crazy. It, <laughs> like I think the best fans I've seen in my life, in my entire life, and, and I'm so grateful for them, and my family so grateful for them, and. And don't get me wrong, they can get on your back sometimes when you know. <laughs> you know what? The love that they they, they give you, it, it it puts down all the negative sides. You know, do you know what I'm saying? So like all the good things they give you, that's all you you remember because it's so much. And the negative bit is is so it makes it so small. So and like for example, the other day I was just driving in town. I think when um, not the other day when Leeds went up, and that's like that was like two years after I left. And I was just driving in town and, and I stopped at some corner shop and they would, I just seen some fans celebrating and I was just like, Machi, you know? <laughs> <laughs> joining with Johnny and then they were like, oh, oh uh, what's that song that they sang for Ronnie? 
Oh, Ronaldo Vieira. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they started singing. They, they started singing like, oh, oh Mario Vieira. Yeah, yeah. oh. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, it was just a little, literally, we, we literally just had like a little, little part outside this corner shop and everyone, nice. I even opened up the doors in my car and played the marching on together song and we were just like, having fun, literally. And then I went inside and bought the, bought the lads some beers and stuff to, you know, just carry on the night and, and celebrate <laughs> what they've been waiting for for the 16 years, you know, 16, yeah. 14, 16 yeah. years. 16 years. Yeah. yeah. A long time. What was it like, um, when you very, kind of... very, very good set of fans and, and I think the best for me the best in the world to be honest oh, nice. that's, that's really fantastic right. has that driven you to kind of get back get back to being a pro and wanting to experience that that level of, of support again from, from a team yeah but I don't think I will ever experience the same level of support that's just me being honest because I think Leeds fans are just unique and, and, and they're the only ones that you know that, that have that passion for the for any type of player, whether whether it's on the 23s, whether it's first team, whether you're on the bench, whether you've not played for the whole year, like they will show you the same love. And that's something like you don't get everywhere. And I don't think I'll ever relive whatever the love, the type of love they've shown me and stuff like that with any other club. Well, they might be close, but I don't think they'll always, they'll, they'll match it. I might be wrong, but you know, it might be right now, I don't think they'll match it because I, they're the best people, and they're, they're, and also like they're so helpful and, and and willing to help, and you know like with even with the charity charity work and stuff like that that I've been putting out there and stuff like they're so supportive with it, and 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 it's just amazing to see like even after all these years that I've left and stuff, and they're still there pushing on and stuff. You know, it's it's, it's brilliant. How was it when you got the call, presumably from like an agent or something that Leeds wanted to sign you? Was that it must have been a massive massive deal yeah that was it, was it was crazy i literally i didn't i didn't say i didn't say i didn't speak to nobody right i, I cut the phone and and just walked out of the house and i, I just went for a walk <laughs> <laughs> i just went for a walk and i was because i'm a i'm a i'm a christian right so like i believe in, in god and stuff like that and i and i had been praying for stuff for, for, for something to happen for me in the football world yeah dreams to come true and that there was was a dream come true for me so like I just went for a walk and I just I just thanked the the Lord and stuff, you know, and and just was just I just couldn't believe it. And then I went back in the house and told my mother and stuff like that. But Ronnie Ronnie already knew. Already, oh, <laughs> I think I think they've they've told because I was there training for like a few weeks, two two three weeks, and then that's when I got told that I was I was gonna sign. But I think I think Ronnie already knew, but he he never he never told me nothing. The bastard. <laughs> the language. Ah, see, right, mate. That's what brothers are for. No worries. <laughs> you're, you're an international footballer, no? How's that feel? That must be incredible. Um, yeah, it feels good. Yeah, representing your country where you were born and stuff. Yeah, it feels great. It feels very good. Yeah. Nice. I read something, and I don't. I hope it's correct because it's not come from uh, me. But I've been trying to do some research and just obviously understand a little bit and am I right in thinking that you come from a footballing family am I, am I, am I miss maybe misread something that maybe was it your mother used to play football is that yeah, like correct in that yeah 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 not like not like pro level or anything of course like no no of course it was just she was just she used to be a tomboy <laughs> when she was back, back like younger she used to be a tomboy and her father and her mother used to hate like my granddad and my grandmother they used to hate that so she used to like so they used to wear dresses like to school but she'd wear a football kit under the dress and stuff. <laughs> and then when she, got, she went to, she wouldn't go to school. She would just go to the field to play with the boys and stuff. And she took the dress off and play. Uh-huh. And then when she went back home, she put the dress on and then, you know, but uh-huh. she got told us she got caught a few times and she got a, a few, li- a few beat- beatings and stuff, but you know, it was worth it. <laughs> I bet that was such a, a good for her. and such an amazing to two of sons to play professional football you know to have not just one but two sons who've, who've done and reached that like that height I think that's a fantastic little story I, when I read that I thought I, I, I didn't want to be cheeky but I had to ask you because it's to me that's a brilliant story that's something that the yeah, people no, would yeah, like it's amazing. she's very she's very proud of us and you know from like for how, how far we've come and you know coming from Guinea-Bissau which is not the greatest country in the world and stuff you know and working our way through adapting and adapting to Portugal, adapting to the language in Portugal, 
and then moving to England, adapting in England to the cold, to the language, to the food, everything. You know, like she's 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 really proud, and 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 you know that's I think that's 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 our goals as as like sons and daughters to make our parents proud. You know, yeah. in whatever we like to do and stuff. You know, so, it's yeah. as you moved from Portugal to to Newcastle. That that is quite the the culture <laughs> shift. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like it was, it wasn't. Do you know what it is though? Like, because in Portugal we had, um, so at school you used to, they used to, you could teach which language you would want to learn. Right. I think we had Spanish, French, and English, and we chose English, but it, we would, we didn't learn nothing. Like when, <laughs> when we got to Newcastle, we were like, "What? <laughs> hello? There's a hello? Uh, excuse? Uh, what?" Pardon? Yeah, that's not English. Yeah. <laughs> Why I pet wasn't on the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Oh god. Nice. Any more questions, boys? Nothing from me. I don't think of a of a kind of professional level. I think one one thing that maybe we can put in there is is sort of have you been with all the recent news from the government, which seems to be hopefully going in the right direction, have you been given an expectation of when Tadcaster will be able to start playing again? Because, you know, um, for when you might get on the pitch and be able to train with your teammates and things, have, have you got any idea or are you still kind of not not been told anything yet? I think I think the, the, the we've been told that the season has been no, uh, void, so like only next season now. So, Wait, so right, but I'm, I'm just keeping fit and training and stuff and, you know, if any opportunity comes by right now from from anywhere else, like abroad or or, or even in England and stuff, or the, uh, anywhere really, just just so I can be ready for it. Do you know what I mean? So like you know, you yeah. gotta stay the, when things like that happen. Yeah. As you never know. Oh, perfect. Nice. Well, that's everything I had, Ross, mate. Thank you very much, and thank you for answering, Ramar. Cheers. No problem, mate. Yeah, thank you. So we we kind of stick to a, a time limit for our podcast. So that's pretty much all the time we've got. But it, it's been incredible to speak to you. That you're our first former player that we've had on the podcast. We've had commentators and guys, but they, they don't know what to talk about. You're a proper yeah. footballer. So it's been great to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. No, Enjoy. anytime, mate. Good luck with everything. Yeah, I mean, we'd be great cheers. to see you back on the pitch. And yeah, if there's anything you want to promote plug or talk about now then we can we we'll edit it into the end so it looks more natural but please feel free I think is there anything that you wanted to say or anyone you want to shout out or you know uh, I just want to I just want to say to all the Leeds fans just keep, keep you know keep supporting the team and even when they're low even when they're up or low just keep be, stay behind them because you know it's hard work coming out of that league you know it's mm. not it's not not easy and for them to be doing as well as they're doing now like just be behind them and you know like you know, you know, us players at the end of the day we're players, yes, but at the end of the day we're we're human beings and we got feelings and stuff. So if any player is underperforming or going through something, just think to yourself like there must be something else in his personal life that might be affecting that before you jump on Twitter and, and you know, criticize a player or anything like that, you know. Take that into consideration before you do that and, and just keep supporting them like you always do and, yeah. and, and keep keep on keep going. That's all. And keep supporting and keep helping the community, keep helping everybody everybody that needs help in this difficult time that we're all going through. Hopefully we all make it through and stay at home and, you know, respect the guidelines and stuff like that. So then we can get out of this as soon as possible. And we can enjoy our our day daily basis and do our stuff and visit family and stuff. That's brilliant. Thank you, mate. Yeah, cheers, Ramara. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Cookie Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends.